Lord together and give Him praise and worship. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. What a wonderful presence of the Lord is in the house again today. I want to say to all of our friends and guests, we are just so happy that you chose to visit with us at the Rock Church. You're among friends, and and there are a number of our church family members present because they love this church, they believe in this church, and this is their church home. And if you're looking for a church, you need not look no further. We have a lot of our church family absent today because of sickness. And that will be the case through the entire month of December. People working second jobs, working overtime. And that's to be understandable. But I'm glad you're here. And, and as the ushers distribute the envelopes for today's tithe and offering, I'm so glad to see my buddy Sean back from Afghanistan. Yes! You're looking good, Sean. When you got to go back to Afghanistan. I can hit that one pretty good. All right. Well, I'm glad that you got to come today. I, I miss you. We pray for you all the time. Get your emails every once in a while. That's good. And uh, you got a beautiful family. Yes. Right. Welcome home. Randy brought Corey with us today. Good to have you, Corey. Good to see you, Randy. And, and, and Tim and Iris and those girls are growing up so big. Good to see all you folks this morning. And Ashley, we're glad to have you with us this morning at the Rock Church. Of course... Bobby and Lavanda, they're part of us. They're not visitors of BJ's parents. And uh, uh, I want to uh, take just a moment and share with you some of the activities taking place. The, the uh, sold-out team and blacklight team done a tremendous job at Walk with the Wise Men Friday and Saturday night at Cornerstone Baptist Church. That's, BJ was the MC, and he wanted to preach to all of them people. That's what he was referring to this uh, short moment ago. But uh, they'll be ministering again tonight. And then next weekend, Stephanie will be ministering uh, all by herself. And uh, I just think it's really a wonderful thing that we have been invited to participate in such an endeavor of, of evangelism. And, uh, of course, Wednesday night, midweek service at 7 o'clock. The first Wednesday of the month traditionally is Kids on Fire, but... We will put kids on fire on temporary hold till next year. And uh, we're going to have a wonderful time Wednesday night. Friday night, uh, we'll be decorating the Christmas float uh, at our new property on the inside of the building there. It won't go in the doors. Well, we're going to find a place to decorate it. We'll tell you more about it Wednesday night. She says, my house. I don't know. Won't go through my door either. My house. But um, I have an awning. Friday night's a good night for you to come out and help us decorate the float. And Saturday morning. Is that Brian? Good to see you, Brian. No, we're, we're, yeah, that's Brian. Yeah, that's Brian. I'm good to see you, Brian. Come in a while ago. Um, Saturday is, of course, is a Christmas parade. Uh, a free billboard with 15,000 people looking at it. Wonderful opportunity, and you're welcome to ride with us on the float. It's been an exciting time, and of course, next Sunday is another great Sunday, the Sunday before Christmas. 
uh, is our annual Christmas program. The young people and the Sunday School Division are running together to pr make a wonderful presentation and and uh, that's always a highlight of our year. You know what's so exciting? I'm excited about two things. Number one, we got the electricity turned on in the youth division at the new church. That happened Friday night before church. I went over there and walked through it. And uh, we're going. We, we men are going to be meeting over there, and the young people are going to be painting, and and uh, we're getting ready to use that building now. And the second thing I'm excited about is that our next Christmas program will not be in this church. Woo! It'll be over there in the new auditorium with, with a wonderful Christmas drop. Amen. That's exciting to me. Praise God. As you bring your tithe and offering to the Lord, how many have brought tithe and offering today? You shouldn't come to church without bringing a sacrifice of an offering. Turn around and ask your neighbor, can I borrow a dollar to put in the offering? You should always bring an offering with you when you come to the house of the Lord. That's a part of your worship. Shake the hands of our guests. Get out of your pew. And let's have a wonderful moment of praise and thanksgiving. Shall we? To you the blind will see. To you the mute will see. To you the dead will rise. To you all hearts will pray. To you the darkness flee. To you my heart scream.
Somebody shout yes. God bless you. You may be seated. BJ and Bodine, Brother Gandy. I want you over here in these seats. I don't know, but I feel this. I'm going to give you fellas three minutes of peace to preach. Maybe three and a half. Are you fellows going to join in with me in reading the book of Psalms in the month of December? Yes. Don't you just love David? Yep. Many of you are not aware that for the last two months we have been preaching on the restoration of the church. How that in the Old Testament Prophet David saw the death, burial, and resurrection. He saw the Messiah. He saw Jesus. And he saw that Jesus was David's Lord. And I'm excited about the book of Psalms. When we get to the new year, I'm going to be preaching more about the restoration of the church than ever before. I believe that God is doing His best to restore the original apostolic church. Oh, we have the doctrine, but there's other things we talked about Wednesday night that many of you wasn't here. I believe that the best is yet to come. Amen. The best is yet to come. I have about three or four messages to preach this morning. But I'm going to give you a first one. Everyone said Bethlehem. All of you are aware that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. The word Bethlehem means house of bread. House of bread. Isn't it ironic that the living bread was born in the house of bread? Jesus said, I am the bread. I am the bread. And this is the season that we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And you owe it to your family to spend time around nativity scenes, enjoying the reasons for the season. It's more than Santa Claus and Christmas gifts and an apple pie and pecan pie. Jesus came for a reason. And you need to find that reason. But all right, Bo, you get the chance to start it out. Hallelujah. Talk about Praise it. Praise God. Amen. Preach it a little bit. Praise God. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I am so glad today that I know who my Father is. Praise God. It wasn't too long ago where I got a revelation one day. It was almost like a light switch went off. And it was like, you know what? When you have Jesus in your life, when you're entering the blood covenant, if you please, when you know who your daddy is, praise God, I tell you what, it'll take things like depression, and it'll take things like sadness, and it'll take things like fear and doubt and unbelief, things that make you think that it, maybe it's not going to be so good when you realize who your daddy is and you realize 
that nothing is impossible with him i tell you what it's a good feeling today i'm so glad today that god led me to a church hallelujah where he filled me with the baptism of the holy ghost and the bible says that when you're filled with this spirit he says he comes in like a fire and he says that his fan is in his hand and one of my favorite bible studies that pastor ever preached was on the fire and i want to tell somebody in this place today i encourage you today your body is literally like a vessel that's just waiting for that flame of god that that flame that comes down in the tabernacle if you please that flame that comes in on that sacrifice and when that flame gets a hold of you sir when that flame gets a hold of you ma'am i tell you what it puts something inside you all of a sudden the things of this old world begin to grow strangely dim the things of this old world that were important yesterday all of a all of a sudden isn't that important today anymore hallelujah praise god praise god that old fire will make you do things that you normally wouldn't do hallelujah it makes you start to think in ways that you normally wouldn't think the bible says that you behold all things are become new hallelujah i tell you what we live in a world that's decaying we live in a world that's rotting away a world that's full of depression a world that's full of fear and i tell you what it's not such a bad thing that these things begin to pass away does anybody in this place want something new this afternoon hallelujah i tell you today before i go sit down if you want the baptism of the holy ghost he says i will baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire amen it is in this place today i'm telling you these next two gentlemen are going to come up here and pastor and everybody else and before this day is through this spirit is going to fall in a way where it's going to be easy to receive hallelujah praise god praise god i know i need to stop my time's probably up but i want to say this there was a time in my life somebody these are for some of you have the holy ghost there was a time in my life where satan came in and try to rob me of some things and try to pull some of these things some of these precious truths that we that we cherish in this place some of this precious holiness that without which no man will see the lord amen and I begin to try to pull some of these things away and I, and I notice i begin to get fearful again and i notice i begin to have problems in my life again that weren't there in the beginning and i noticed when i begin to erode away and fall away but you know what i'm telling you right now somebody in this place he talked about renewal amen he says renew this gift that is within you stir up the gift that is inside i want to tell somebody today if you find yourself in this place thinking well maybe maybe it's not necessary well maybe we don't have to do this and and maybe we don't have to do that i'm telling you right now renew yourself in this precious holy ghost renew yourself in this precious truth because i'm telling you what when you bear yourself in this blessings will begin to flow that you never dreamed of he said oh open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you'll never dream of i'm in a living testimony to this praise god amen hallelujah i love the lord today i love the lord today his fan is in his hand i remember when i first got this holy ghost if you would have told me to jump off a bridge for jesus i was so excited and so happy about it i'm telling you i jumped off the empire state building if you wanted me to and you know what it's a good feeling when you get in that place when you get in that place where you just don't care and you just don't care what anybody thinks about you and you don't care what anybody has to say anymore and you and you know what you say you know, i'm gonna live it if the whole world stands against me i'm gonna live this precious acts 238 truth and praise god i'm gonna stop my sinning i'm gonna live my life holy praise god i'm telling you today there's power in this and i encourage somebody to receive the baptism of the holy ghost in the tabernacle of david amen praise god now a certain man was sick named lazarus of bethany the town of mary and her sister martha that was the maid which anointed the lord with ornament and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother lazarus was sick therefore his sister sent unto him saying lord behold he whom thou lovest is sick and when jesus heard that he said this sickness is not unto death but for the glory everybody say glory of god that the son of man might be glorified thereby if you jump on down lazarus died 
And the same woman who just sent to Jesus, who knew that he was able to deliver him from sickness, makes this same statement. She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Son of Christ, the Son of God, which have come into this world. But a few verses down, she says, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. If you would have intervened, Lord, my situation right now wouldn't look so bleak. God, if you would have just come when I sit for you, then everything would have worked out the way that I thought it was going to work out. But then she makes a statement that will blow your mind. She says, but even now, I know you are able to bring him back to life. And I don't know, I just kind of feel this way this afternoon, that somebody in this place has been going through some situations and some things in your life, and you prayed directly to the Lord God Almighty himself, and you prayed a certain prayer. And it seems like you prayed that prayer, and all of a sudden it doesn't seem like Jesus has even showed up. It doesn't even like seem like Jesus even acknowledged what's going on in your life. You thought it was going to turn out a different way. You thought things were going to be a little bit different. You thought when you prayed that prayer, that bippity boppity boo, Jesus was going to show up and all of a sudden everything would be better. But now you're looking in the face of your situation. You're looking at your life and you're wondering, God, what happened? God, you said you were able to do it. God, you, I believe that you were able to do it. And I'm sitting here dying. My family's dying. My hope's dying. My face's dying. Everything around me is dying. Why is it taking you four days to show up? Why is it taking you this long to get me an answer, God? What is going on? Oh, I'm fixing to minister in the Holy Ghost. I don't think I can do it in three and a half minutes. I'm sorry. See, what you don't understand is if Jesus would have showed up on the third day. See, there was a, a, a Levitical law back then that said that if someone died, that there is a possibility in a three-day period of time that their spirit could actually come back to life. That they believed that if you died, it took at least three days for you to be really dead. And you had no chance after that third day of ever being alive again. And you're sitting where you're at right now, my God, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. And you feel like Jesus is nowhere on his way to rescue you. Let me explain something to you, see. You don't understand what you're going through right now. You don't know why you're feeling these things. You don't know what's happening in your life. It's because it's not for your glory. Let me say that again. It's not for your glory. He was sick. Yeah, he was sick, but he was sick because it was for God's glory. See, he showed up on the fourth day. That way when he showed up, everybody knew it was an undeniable, unmistakable, no way around it miracle that nobody but Jesus could do. See, Jesus knew that something had to die in order for their faith to be loosed. And you're in this building today and you wonder why you're going through your, what you're going through. You need some things to die first. Without death, there can be no resurrection. <laughs> oh my God. See, everybody wants to live Psalms 23. Everybody can quote Psalms 23. It's the most quoted scripture in the world. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You will never get to that place unless you kill the giant. You think David wrote that psalm just because everything was going good in his life and everything was... No. He said, I have faced 
the giant in my life. I've got this thing that, that's been bothering me. i got this giant that's been on my back. I can't seem to shake it, but I've got an ability to know that I have been there. I have done that. I know I can slay the giant. So though I walk through this valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil today. Lift your hands right now. My God, right now. See, you got some giants in your life. See, he picked up five stones. You know what? David picked up five stones. He only needed one. But he knew that Goliath had four more brothers. And he knew that, you know what? I may knock down this giant, but he's got a big brother over there. And I might need it to knock him down. And I might knock that one down, but he's got a brother over there that I might have to fight. And I may knock down that one, but he's got another brother. Today, you don't need to just try to knock down your giant. You need to cut the head off of your giant in your life. And you need to know that some things in your life must die. And even now, it may look like things are going bad in your life. But if you'll just hold on a little bit longer. Jesus is coming down your street. Just hold on a little bit longer. He's starting, things are starting to smell bad. The smell of death is starting to speak a little bit. But if you can just hold on a little bit longer, Jesus is coming your way. Woo! Hallelujah. My Lord. When he said y'all going to preach about three and a half minutes each, I said, Lord, you got to help me. And the Lord instantly spoke back and said, there's some things you got to do on your own. Thank God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thank God. I, that, that brought a message to my heart that, I preached uh, before. Might have been here. I don't know. But uh, when he said that to me, my mind went to a message that I preached. There's some things that you've just got to do on your own. Some things you've got to do on your own. And I, I, I thought of the story when, when the man took his son to Jesus that the Bible says that he often cast him into the fire and tried to burn him. And he often, oft times, is a verbiage for that, that he, that he put him in the water and he tried to drown him. And when he went to Jesus, he said, I went to the church and they couldn't do anything for him. If, if thou can do anything, have mercy upon us. And Jesus looked at him and said, how long has this been upon him? He said, from his childhood up. And he said, if thou canst only believe, all things are possible for those that believe. Anybody believe in here today? Anybody going to have faith to kill that giant that he's talking about? And the Bible said something that was astonishing to me. He said, Jesus said to that man, he said, if thou canst only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And that man's reply shook the very foundation of my soul. He said, Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. He had heard enough about God. He had seen enough about the miracles of God. He was saying to him, Believing is not the problem. I know what you can do. That's not the issue. It's my unbelief that's the problem. Oh God, if we can somehow get the unbelief out of the building and fill it up with belief, there's no telling what God will do in this place for us today. Amen. When, when, when Jesus followed Jairus home and his daughter had died, he went to him and followed him there and walked in. He could feel, he could feel, how many times do we hear people saying, I feel this or I feel that? We go by our feelings. When we try to tune into the anointing, we don't care about how much money anybody's got. Or, or how they stand in the upper echelon of society. All we're looking for is the vein of the Holy Ghost uh, that would get a hold of somebody's heart and change their life. And when Jesus walked into the house of Jairus, 
the Bible says that they started laughing in pure scorn when he said she's not dead she's only asleep but there was something that moved in the heart of God it was a vein of the spiritual power of heaven and I, I don't know this but I like to think of it like this that he had Peter James and John to go back and open the door of that house that day and then when he had them to open the door he looked at them the mockers and the, and the, and the doubters and the fearful and he said mockery get out of the house amen just get them on out of the house he said he, he said uh, no faith all of you that don't have any faith get out of the house and he said laughter get out of the house when he got it out when he got it all cleaned out not until then not until then that he said damsel I say unto the wise and something began to happen that was that was life that came back in that girl's body I'm telling you that there's some things uh, you got to do on your own Jesus had to take authority over that and I believe that that same God said that the same power he talked about the power he said he said greater than this shall you do thank God thank God he said in the eighth chapter of the book of John I shall not only be with you but I shall be in you anybody feel him inside of you today oh God if that promise is true and I know that it is that every one of us have the power to tread upon spirits we have the power to rebuke the demons of hell we have the power to be overcomers hallelujah oh God there's some things you gotta do on your own the Bible says that when he looked at that man the father said if you can do anything have come have compassion on us have mercy upon us the Bible says and Jesus took him by the hand and he lifted him up comma which means break or pause until the author finishes his statement he took him by the hand and lifted him up he tugged at him yeah. yes get down here brother BJ real quick hurry up get out on the floor he took him by the hand and lifted him up whoa, whoa, whoa. the Bible doesn't say he got up it said he lifted him up he pulled at him then the young man arose I believe Jesus had done dropped his hand that break and that pause until the author finished his statement showed what happened. He did not get up on his feet when Jesus lifted him. He was like a little limp dish towel. But when it got a hold of his heart, he said, you know what? If I'm going to get anything from God right now, i got to do it on my own. And I'm telling you today that if you want something from God today, the Sunday school teacher can't give it to you. Right, right, right. Amen. Sister Janet can't give it to you. Brother BJ can't give it to you. You've got to get it on your own. I don't know about anybody else, but I came to get everything I can get from God today. I refuse to go home the way I came. In Jesus. Hallelujah. Come be the fire inside of me come be the flame upon my now heart stand together. come be the fire inside of me until you and I are one come be the fire inside of me come be the flame upon my heart Inside of me until you 
have it all. My heart is yours. You won't relent until you have it all. My heart is yours. I said, you as a seal upon my And many waters cannot quench this love. for a job well done. Each one of you have preached my message. I think of the moment when David cut off Goliath's head. He took that head back to Saul's tent. As a trophy of victory. But when you read on after that little moment in Saul's tent. He took Goliath's head back to Jerusalem. The Jebusites during the time of David were in charge of Jerusalem. And it was a custom of that day They not only cut off the head, but they stuck that head on a stick. And picture this in your mind. Here's little David with Goliath's head on the end of a stick marching to Jerusalem. All of a sudden, passers-by get a glimpse of that head and say, hey, that's Goliath's head. And the message goes before David. David is coming with Goliath's head. What David was trying to send a message to the genocide was this. You're next. head is next. I have defeated the enemy of my life. And now I'm coming up to you. You enemy of fear and doubt and confusion and unbelief. You're next. There's 
some of you in this building today, you heard enough preaching to choke a mule. And you got enemies that you've not destroyed. You've got giants in your life that are still living. And BJ, those four stones, you know what they represented? It wasn't J E S U S. It was G-R-A-C-E. 800 years before Calvary. David got a revelation of grace. Yeah. But you don't live for God out of your works and out of your talent and out of your money. But because God loves you as you are, His mercy and His grace is sufficient to take the enemy down in your life. I think just a moment, you ought to step out of your pew, come to this front right now, all across the building, and we're going to worship the Lord and celebrate for a little while, because you've got Goliath in, in your hand, and you need to tell the adversary of your soul, I'm coming after you next. I'm coming after depression. I'm coming after frustration. I'm coming after financial crisis. I'm coming after marital issues. I'm coming after things in my life. It's going to die.
once in a while. That's good. You need to grab hold of the hair of Goliath's head. And lift that head up and say, all right. Here's one. And start looking into your life. adversaries that are coming your way. When David got to Jerusalem with that head, he cut off their heads too. And he retook the city of David. Jerusalem. That's when it became the city of David when David with Goliath's head took back from the enemy that which belonged to God. David spoils, if you please. Amen. God bless you. It's Christmas season. Frustrate yourself with your lack of money. Right. It's not about gifts. Well, if I had a thousand dollars, I'd buy gifts for so and so and so and so. No, you wouldn't. If you had a thousand dollars, you I'll blow it on something else. True. You can't buy your love with gifts. True. But you can buy your love with presents. Your presents. Amen. And uh, I encourage you to draw close to your family this year and make this a very merry, merry Christmas. Amen. God bless you. You dismiss. In Jesus' name.